there, my RPG lovers, and welcome to another video. After I finished my first playthrough of Dragon's Dogma 2, I immediately wanted to start a fresh playthrough, which I did. But this time around, I didn't want to use any pawns. The pawns are a huge feature in Dragon's Dogma 2, and the game is built around the party system, even though you can't technically play as a solo adventurer. I got pretty confident as a warrior, and I wanted to challenge myself a little bit, so I started a fresh new game. This was not a new game plus experience, it was a fresh beginning. It was not a speed run or anything like that, in fact, I wanted to explore some parts of the map that I missed during my first playthrough. It took me 47 hours to complete this playthrough, and as you can see from this end game screen, there are no support pawns who are supposed to be my favorites. And the main pawn finished the game as level 10, because there is a quest in the game which forcefully brings back your pawn. From the very beginning, I just killed my pawn, and I never used any rift portals in the game which would revive it. This also prevents other pawns to approach you in the world, because you have to have your main pawn for this to happen. Pray, seek out your loyal pawn arisen. The first quest which brings back your pawn happened pretty early in the game, but I just threw her in the water again. <laughs> a curious rumor. Only in the pause game she comes back, because your main quest is to retrieve your pawn, and this was the first time she was leveling up 10 times in a row. So yeah, no main pawn and no support pawns at all. So how different was this playthrough compared to the normal one? Well, let's find out. I could already tell that playing solo as a warrior is going to be a completely new experience. Not only when it comes to the difficulty of the fights. You have to think about the carry weight all the time, because you can't share items with your party and reduce the loads. You don't want to reach heavy status as a warrior, because you start moving like a tank, which is very annoying. That part of the game becomes less tedious when you get certain items like a ring which increases the carry weight and those bugs you can loot all over the place. Some of the items that I never used on my normal playthrough are all of a sudden very important. I'm talking about various spell books that you can find, potions to cure specific debilitations and so on. Dragon's Dogma 2 is not an extremely challenging game when you play it as Capcom intended. But when you don't even have your loyal pawn to help you in certain situations, the difficulty spike is quite prominent. The warrior is a very slow vocation and he has very powerful but slow abilities. Some of the normal enemies are very annoying to deal with as a warrior, like the harpies in the early game. Come to think of it, I think they killed me the most, but when I got the ring from the tower near the capital, dealing with them became much easier. It's still annoying, but at least you won't be put to sleep all the time. You become the main target of all enemies in the fight when you play with no pawns. So if you're attempting a solo run, you should know exactly what your vocation is capable of. I've spent around 100 hours in the game as a warrior, but I still can't say that I mastered this vocation. I was doing a bit of experimenting with different abilities until I found the best combination of skills for this playthrough, at least for me. This can be highly situational and you might want to switch some abilities around from time to time. Let's talk about the most OP ability that a warrior has. It's actually the first ability you get as a warrior, the Skyward Thunder. This is your main damage dealing ability in pretty much all fights. It's insanely good, and I think that's because this ability can connect with the enemy up to 3 times in a single hit, while doing some very good base damage in general. It also deals a good amount of knockdown damage, which is extremely important as a warrior, because it allows you to stun enemies easier. When you're playing with pawns, it makes no sense not to use this ability all the time, especially when the enemy is focusing on your pawns. It's a bit different when you're playing solo, because, like I said, you're the only target in combat. Well, from time to time you'll find NPCs and wandering pawns which will fight the enemy and make things easier for you because you're not the only target. But you can't exactly rely on that all the time. Which means that you have to use other warrior abilities in different situations. 
That brings us to Shoulder Tackle, which is essential for Solo Warrior Run. You can combine it with your regular attacks for the quick recovery, or just use it before you're going to get hit. It can even be used to knock down some enemies when they're performing specific attacks like the Minotaur Charge. Or you can just use it to reposition yourself, which is very useful in fights against multiple smaller enemies. Then we have Tidal Fury, which is essential against specific enemy types like the Tomb Lords and Headless Horsemen. But even just in general, Tide of Fury made my solo warrior playthrough a lot easier. It can be hard to get used to the timing of this ability, but when you do, it becomes essential. It's one of the most effective ways to deal with a bunch of smaller enemies at once. You can even use it against bigger enemies and deal some serious damage and knockdown damage as well. Even if you miss the timing, you're going to block all the damage in front of you, which is a game changer. If you're not comfortable with a shoulder tackle, you can just use Tidal Fury to block most attacks. Ravaging Lunge is another very useful but situational ability. You can use it to quickly move around the map, combine it with gravity and kill enemies instantly or try to catch those annoying archers. Seriously though, dealing with archer enemies is way more annoying with no pawns as a warrior because they move around very fast and they try to kite you. You're not even thinking about this when you're playing in a party full of pawns. Then we have Arc of Might, which you can get from the Warrior Maester NPC after completing a very long quest chain. It's totally worth it, because this ability hits like a truck, at the expense of using all of your stamina. It's a great way to deal heavy damage to enemies which are knocked down. But you always have to have an item to replenish your stamina right away if you don't want to get hit or even killed after you use this ability. Those will be all the main abilities that I use for this playthrough. You can of course try to experiment and see what works the best for you if you plan to do a solo warrior run. And let's not forget the core warrior abilities like timing a regular attack. It can be a deadly ability in a lot of fights, especially later on. My choice of weapon was a sword, but it would be optimal to use a two-handed mace because of the knockdown power. I did in fact switch to a mace much later on when I found Cinder Spine. But before that, I was just using two-handed swords and my main focus was always to upgrade the weapon as much as I could. Searching for materials is not that hard, so this shouldn't be a big deal. You only need to kill certain enemies once or twice to upgrade the weapon to the max. And of course, if you want to dragon forge it, you need to kill at least one dragon. Each dragon drops 15 crystals, which is exactly what you need to dragon forge a weapon. That being said, early game can be brutal as a warrior, because you won't deal much damage, so you have to play a lot careful in general. But when you get your warrior build rolling and unlock augments, it becomes much more bearable. I actually started the game as an archer, just so I can get the stamina augment from the vocation. And I also later on switched to a fighter so I can get the metal augment as well, and that was pretty much it. All of my other augments came from the warrior itself. When it comes to bigger enemies, killing Cyclops was fun, but pretty easy in general. I love to stagger them a bit, then push them over with grabbing their feet. I had a very fun fight with two Cyclops at once. Ogres are a bit more difficult, but still pretty easy to deal with one-on-one. -on -one. You can always try to exploit their AI if you want, but even facing them head-on is not a big deal. Oh, and by the way, did you know that you can Tidal Fury their flying kick ability? It's very satisfying to do. Later on, you can just spam the regular attack and kill them with no issues.
the most annoying bigger enemies to fight are griffins because they fucking run away so much in the early game. I came very close to killing them a bunch of times, but they would just fly away. For the majority of this playthrough, I felt like I was hunting or being hunted by the griffin. This fucker can show up in the worst time possible, but when I try to hunt it, he's nowhere to be found, of course. Surprise, motherfucker! It's a similar story with the drakes. In my first couple of fights against these flying lizards, I came close to killing them and they would just fly away. I also tried killing them very early on, but it's very freaking hard, so I just gave up. Later on, I would gladly start fighting them whenever I can, and it's very fun when you do it right. Then we came to the most annoying fights you have to do as a warrior, which includes all enemies with specific weak spots on their bodies. Those would be golems, plague dragons and those endgame monsters you get to fight. Plague dragons are not a big deal, because you will hit those weak spots very easy, even if you don't aim your abilities that well. Golems are very slow, which allows you to easily hit those weak spots, but I still don't like fighting them all that much. When it comes to those endgame fights, I wanna give you a moment to skip if you wish, because they're technically a spoiler, but not a huge one I guess. So you can use the timestamp to skip this if you wish. You still there? Good. My first fight with the dragon was much harder than the second one because I figured out that I can just stand on the dragon and spam regular fast attacks. Getting to his neck weak spots was very annoying though, and it made the fight much more tedious. By the way, you can totally ignore those spots on his arms and go straight for the back and start spamming the attack. The range with two-handed weapons is amazing, so you'll get most of the weak spots with a single burst. I thought the fight with the worm would be more annoying, but it was not. It's basically the same story like with the dragon. However, this thing will start spamming those huge AoE attacks when their health is very low and destroying those last couple of dots can be very frustrating. The Headless Horseman is a pain in the ass to deal with as a warrior. The rest of the enemies in the post game are pretty much the same because you'll hit like a truck at level 50. Oh yeah, I also fought Grigori the dragon. It's a much better version of the fight from the first game, but it's pretty easy and pretty annoying as a solo character. It took me a while to kill him because hitting those chest weak spots is much harder compared to regular dragons in the game. Back to the regular game. The fight against Medusa was cool, but I was very high level when it happened, so it was not that challenging. At the very end, I realized I forgot to fight the swings, so I can't exactly talk about that, unfortunately. Overall, the combat in this game is all about momentum. When you have it, it's very hard to lose it, but if you never had it in the first place, you're going to get stomped on. Even when you have some very useful items that can get you out of the stun lock, it's still very hard to regain momentum once you're on the ground. There were some extremely frustrating moments, mostly against weaker enemies actually. And of course, Dragon's Dogma 2 can be very unpredictable, so crazy moments happened as well. But overall, I would highly recommend trying a solo run with your favorite vocation in the game. It completely changes the way you play the game and it's a unique experience. I still love the pawn system and I want to do another playthrough with only my main pawn, but this time around as a new vocation. All of those 100 hours that I spent in the game was with a warrior. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, pressing a thumbs up button and subscribing would mean a lot. Many thanks to all of my current channel members and Patreons, and I'll see you in the next one.